Welcome back to Night in the Woods. Looks like we've recovered from everything that happened at the mines. I'm really curious where the story is going to go from here. I don't really know. It feels directionless at this point. It feels like we're kind of like at the end, but surely something more must happen, right? Away message. It's good to be alive this morning. That's all. Hey, man. Nice messages last night. I mean, like, really? You massive dork. Band practice today. Because I feel like we need to do something normal. I'm at the Snalkin. Hope you're feeling okay. Sincerely, Gregory. Hey, May. You okay this morning? I'm not opening the pickaxe today. Greg informs me we're doing band practice, though. I'll see you there. Weather service. Snow in the forecast. Are you ready for what's coming your way? I feel like we're either, like, almost done with, with the game, or I'm only, like, halfway done with the game. I don't know. I get a very strange feeling right now. Oh, yeah. Do we have any new songs? No. Guess I'm playing TikTok some more. Oh. Epilogue. So, I guess we are almost at the end. We're gonna eat you for Thanksgiving, bird. I should, like, reread some of these. I mean, I got time. And the cozy months are coming. Shapes from beyond the veil of space. Okay, yeah. Let's go with that one. Let's see what the back of the book says. Released in 1937, Shapes from Beyond the Veil of Space is a towering achievement and marks the start of the weird gothic genre. An influence on much of 20th and 21st century horror, science fiction, and pulp literature, Shapes is sure to make you question just how far away the night sky is from you. At this moment. Cool. God, it's us. It's just us. Home and us. I don't know what this feeling is. But I'm not going to cry today. Hey, Granddad's Clock. Hey, Granddad. May, honey? Is that you? Yeah. I'm back in the kitchen, if you want to talk. Hey, sweetie. Hey, Mom. How are you feeling? Good enough to jump up here. Can you do me a favor and stay home tonight? Why? It's been... I just... You're an adult, and you can do whatever you want. But you do live here, and you're still my baby. Oh, Mom. We need to come up with some ground rules, just because... Honey, you could have died the other night. And then you just left to hang out with your friends? I... I... I'm so sorry, Mom. Sweetie, what's going on with you? I've had a really tough year, Mom. Hon, you've had a tough week. We all have. Yeah, but... What happened at school, hon? I don't care what it is, just please, tell me. Are you working today? No. Me and your father are both off today. I'll be around tonight. We can talk about it then? Sure. We can make breakfast for dinner like we used to. Dad can float the pancakes in the air. 
<laughs> sure. Are you going out today? Yeah. Can you please stay in town, close? Yeah, Mom. I think they're getting some of the longest night decorations out. Oh, wow. Calling for some snow, too. That went fast. What did? The fall. Always does, hon. Huh? Okay. Well, I'm off. I love you, sweetie. I love you too, Mom. Oh, there's Dad. Yeah, look at it. Saw some little, like, icy snowflakes falling down for a second. And, like, the color temperature of everything is definitely more blue and neutral and not as kind of orangey. Not as folly. Hey, Dad. No work today? I told Bob to shove it. Really? No. You okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I hate my job. Oh, Dad. Why? I've mined, I've made glass, I've done a heap of other stuff. This place. They just don't respect you for working. They don't? Job's supposed to pay you enough to live. Job's supposed to let you provide for your family. Job's supposed to have regular hours. The boss is supposed to respect you. Worker's supposed to be able to talk. Worker's supposed to be able to have a life. Worker's supposed to be able to live. Your mom always had to work, but... I wanted to give you and her your time. I wanted her to have hobbies. And enough time and money to do them. That's what made me happy. Now I just work so I can keep our health insurance. And hold on to the house. Try to, at least. Is there anything you can do? I mean, we do need a union. It's just easier to say it than get it done. Unions were always there in the mines of the factory. At least for a while. But here... I got something for you. Ooh, is this gonna be the tooth? Granddad's tooth? Got that out of the basement. How'd you get in the basement? Door in the crawl space. That's spooky. So what it got is... A tooth. A what? Do you know what this tooth is? No. Really? You sure? Yeah. Granddad must have had it from the old days. May. Thank you. Wow. Looks bright and new. Like they just pulled it out of his skull yesterday. You show that to your boss and tell him to eat shit. May. Sorry. I'll just keep it with me. Sure thing. May. Yeah? You come down and pick it with us if we walk out? I will breathe fire, Dad. Love you, kitten. Be back later, Dad. Oh, there's another snowflake. Single solitary snowflake. They seem very rare. Oh, there's a lot over here. Okay, so I'm just trying to get some thoughts kind of straight in my head, and I think it might help to actually talk them out, because I'm still trying to absorb everything that happened when we went to the mine. It's... It's a lot to take in. I'm trying to think of what the implications of that are for everything that we know and everything that we've seen. Um, okay, here, here's kind of like thought number one. I feel like that, I'm just going to call them the secret society or, I don't know, the worshippers or whatever. The people feeding what they call the black goat, the thing in the hole. Feeding it with delinquents and homeless people and just in any kind of person that would not be really noticed. Um, those people, they can't help but make me think of something that we're actually seeing a lot of nowadays, like, in normal life outside of the game. And by that I mean, they said they're a bunch of old-timers, right? 
They're a bunch of old timers that are sacrificing sacrificing people. Delinquents and homeless people. Just anybody who won't be missed. They're doing that in the hopes that will like appease their their god or their whatever. And they think it'll make the town healthier. They think that like when they, they didn't do that properly, when they didn't feed it properly every month like they they think they're supposed to. That's what caused things like the flood. I don't know if it's intentional, but uh, that can't help but make me think of sort of the, the modern joke that's almost turned into a meme now, which is like, millennials are killing insert X, they're killing this thing, they're killing that thing, avocado toast, etc, etc. Millennials are killing cable, they're killing the whatever. And just like all that bullshit, blaming millennials for the economy being shit, even though that is completely misguided and a load of crap. And that just makes me think of it, right? A bunch of old timers like sacrificing, I guess not just younger people, also homeless and etc. But I don't know, just sacrificing other people in the hopes it'll bring them back to some better pass. Especially, you know, what really, really made me think about it strongly was when the people in the, the worshippers mentioned money or resources being given to immigrants. That made me think, oh, like these are those sorts of people. Old timers, racists want things to be, you know, sort of like make Possum Springs good again. I hate to say that because, oh god, I hate that sort of term, but like, that's the sort of thinking. I'm also trying to think of what's changed with May, because May is definitely different now. I mean, just the overall mood of the game and May itself feels like a huge weight has been lifted. Now that. Well, now that what? Now that I guess all those worshippers are almost certainly dead? Which is definitely... I mean, it's definitely a good thing. They, after all, kidnap people and kill them. So that obviously would make May feel a lot better now. They don't have to worry about being watched all the time. But May also said they're in my head, right? Like, there's something about them that was in my head. I guess specifically that one that had that little... I think it was actually like a like a, a, a miner's light, like a light on front of a hard hat. I think that's the one wearing the extra thing that the others weren't. I think that was like a hard hat light. I think it was specifically that one. The one that we shot, or Greg shot at least. That May was saying, it's like they're in my head. I mean, were they doing something? Were they somehow doing something to May? I don't, like I don't understand what they could have been doing to get in their head. Right, like I'm trying to figure out, is this something they were quite literally doing to May, or is this have to do with May's mental illness? Because I mean, May definitely is mentally ill, right? I'm pretty sure. I mean, given everything that's been happening, especially since the uh, the incident, May uh, hit that one person with a baseball bat, sent him to the hospital. So I'm just trying to figure out what parts of this are May's mental trouble, and which of this is the worshippers, and also, um, should we talk about the black goat, the the demon in the hole in the mine? Um, it, it, okay, I guess it's caved in, but it's still there, right? Like, uh, and what about the god thing that we talked to in our dreams? I mean, was that real? Was that the thing? I don't know. I, I just feel like a lot is unresolved, and I don't really know exactly what's happened. But the game isn't over yet, so let's keep going and see if maybe things become more clear. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm working, May. Sure. <sighs> What's wrong? Don't ask. A lot of weird calls this morning. <laughs> I bet. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Um, so everybody that was part of the society, they were all from Possum Springs, right? They were all people in Possum, Possum Spring, citizens. And they even said, like, we are the people of Possum Springs. You know, we're all over the place. You don't know who we are, but we know who you are. Basically, you're being watched all the time. Be careful. That's what they're saying, threatening me. So, since they're just general hidden citizens around Possum Springs, aren't there going to be, like, a dozen random people missing? In one day? I mean, people are gonna notice when, like, a dozen of the citizens go missing in one day. 
And if you know who went missing on this specific day, then you know who were members of the cult or whatever. What kind of calls? Question. You haven't seen... Never mind. Go do whatever it is you do. Okay, fine, I will. May. Spit it out already. Be careful. Just be careful. Well, geez, till now I never considered that. May. Okay, fine, thanks, bye. Yeah, I bet there's been a lot of weird calls about missing people, hmm? Hey, May. Sup, Selmers. You okay? After the whole, like, head injury thing. Yeah, I'm alright. Headache is all. I got some migraine meds if you need it. Nah, it's not a migraine. And those things make me have to pee. It's the caffeine. If you ever take pills that make you pee, it's the caffeine. I didn't know that. Used to work at the pharmacy. Oh, right. Well, if I ever have a headache, or need to pee, I'll come by. Anytime, neighbor. Snow coming. Gonna be bad this year. Yeah, I'm interested if anybody that I normally see is missing. So this person, obviously, isn't part of the club. That doesn't really answer the question, Colleen. That very much does answer the question. The amount of rock salt isn't the problem. We don't have enough damn trucks for this thing. Car slip sliding all up and down this goddamn hill. Colleen! Half damn did it just close the road when the storm hits. Oh, yeah, good, let's just give up. It's not giving up, Colleen. I'm sick of you undermining me. It's just a bad idea. That's not undermining. It's undermining. I'm on Colleen's side on this one. Well, that's just great. That's just peachy, ain't it? Okay, fine. We'll just close all the roads. Let's close down the whole damn town. Your ideas are always the most important. And the most thought out. What the... We're gonna do another water balloon toss? I nearly froze to death last time. I still have the sniffles. I think we can all agree it's too cold for water balloons. Yeah, Kathleen. Too cold for another stupid idea. Go to hell, Colleen. We could just hire some private plows. If you want to go against the DOT union, go right ahead. We got agreements with the county and state. Colleen's right on this one, too. If you do agree so much, why don't you just get married already? <sighs> I'd rather die. I'd rather break my own femurs with a cinder block. Alright, well, now that's settled, what are we doing about the road? Break for food? Great idea. I'm starving. See, we can still make decisions. Move out, troops. <laughs> well, none of them are part of the group. Hey, May. Hey, Mr. Jazikoff. Got any more Dusk Stars we can look at? One more. Burn my eyes again. Erskine the Firemaker. The Firemaker. A wanderer in the cold and dark. Making a fire and huddling up to it. For light and warmth. Sounds festive. Sounds like survival. Hmm. The star makes me want to cry. Crying? On my roof? Do you wish to talk about it? No, it's fine. Is it a happy cry or a sad cry? I don't know. I don't have great words for it. 
It's okay. Sometimes too many words. Yeah. Thank you for this. Thank you for joining me. I think we've discovered them all? Well, we didn't really discover them, right? I mean, someone else already saw them and named them. Wrote a whole bunch of stuff about them. And we just, like, found what they made for us. Is that not a discovery? Not really. Maybe not in the historical sense. We did not create the stars, or name them. But we had these autumn afternoons and found them together. Isn't that something? Something, something, something. My granddad said something like that once. Something about a story having really happened. Because hearing it happened to you. That's nice. It's not bad. Oh, I get to see them all at once. <laughs> That's cool. So what now? A super moon is coming. What's that? A giant moon. Oh, that does sound super. You must come meet me when it happens. It will be late at night. There will be others on their roofs. You come. I'll make the hot chocolate. What a time. That sounds great. I want to see a super moon. Plan on it. See you later, Mr. Chazikov. See you soon, Stargazer. Normally I cut when I'm going from place to place in the town, but now that the town looks a bit different, and I'm also on the lookout, especially for anybody who may be conspicuously missing, I don't think I'm going to cut very much. Just for the moment. Also, I haven't been in this tunnel in forever. Oh, hey. When winter come and water freeze, here the fish can be at ease. The tunnel is not flooded ruin. It's a home, a place for doing. Sure, that works. Please go away. Jeez, rude. Hmm, you're May. Yeah. Do I know you? You did when you were a baby child. Miss Rosa. Oh, hmm. I'm sorry. That's alright. Time does that. You know, I knew your grandfather. Oh, really? Yes, long ago. If you like to ever talk about him, I got history to pass on. Before I join him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, sure. I'm here from time to time. Stop by when you like. And allow ourselves a talk. History don't keep itself. Sounds like a plan, Miss Rosa. Until later, May Borowski. I wonder how long they've been here for. I hope we get a bunch more days in this town, otherwise I won't be able to talk to them again. Are the kids still here? Oh, that's where that music's coming from! Ha! <laughs> They're down here now! There's definitely some instrumentation, though, that is not coming from these two. Like, percussion, but... <laughs> whatever, it sounds cool. Hey, you guys. Yeah? Stay safe, alright? Wow, thanks, Mom. Are you our new mom? Apparently. Life, man. It goes. Slowly. Nah, dude. Nah. I wish those two playing the music would shut the F up. Hey. Watch it. Yeah, beautiful music.
Hey. Well, hey there, May. What are you doing? Uh, just cleaning up. How did the council council vote go? We lost. I lost. It was just me pushing for it, really. We've got all this empty space. Could use it for so many things. But... You tried. All we can do. And God will show up when the time is right. Bruce is my friend. Mine too. Bruce is my friend too. You need some help cleaning this place up? But to be nice, May. There's a rake back in the shed behind the church. Oh, I can't do it now, but... <laughs> Run along, May. <laughs> hey. You okay? Hey. I heard you were, like, in the hospital or something. <laughs> yeah. What for? Fell into a ravine while running through the woods at night. Why? Uh, chased by a death cold of conservative uncles? Yeah, yeah, that's a good description. Death cold of conservative uncles. Alright, you don't have to tell me. So you're really okay? Yeah, just been a weird few days. Okay. I got worried. Oh, I'm super tough. Nothing's gonna get me anytime soon. Oh, good. That's good. So, I'm gonna split. Part-time? How do they not have the hours? It's a huge store. How do they not have the hours? They got a computer program. It's all hooked up to some kind of mainframe or something. It spits out the optimum schedule for all the employees. Manager can't do much about it. Computer don't play favorites. Yeah, guess you can't argue with a computer. Did Nancy give you hell? Nah, she did laugh though. I laugh too. We still gonna do that movie? Yeah, let's find a night we're all off. I'm off Tuesdays. I'm off Sundays. Thursday's my only night off. We can all put in requests? That is the most fucking sad thing, holy shit. Let's just take a second to- <laughs> Oh my god. <sighs> Let's just take a second to, um... Absorb everything we just saw and just how fucking sad that was. So, three friends... Commiserating about basically how shitty their jobs are. One of them saying that they, like, can't get the right hours that they want because their schedule is dictated by a computer program meant to optimize optimize the costs at the expense of, you know, humans having a reasonable life and a reasonable schedule. And they all just want to see a movie together, but they can't really because none of them have the same days off. Yeah, the modern work-life balance is seriously fucked up. Because, I mean, for a lot of people, how the hell can you have a good balance between work and life when you have to work whatever shitty hours you can possibly get just to get by? Don't really have a choice in the matter. And companies are sure hell-bent on exploiting the hell out of you. I mean, Christ. Actually, super relevant, because this is a game. Just look at how incredibly prevalent crunch is in games. That is, working long, long, long hours, much more than normal, to uh, complete a game, you know, to meet deadlines, and get it out at, at the time that they told their investors they were going to get it out at, and, and such things. It's incredibly prevalent, and we're talking people working 60, 80 hours a week. Like, sleeping at the fucking office. Very common. Very, very common. Whew. Mind you, I don't think they did that for this game. This, this is an indie game made by quite a few people, and I think they've talked about crunch before. Yeah, pretty sure they didn't crunch to make this game. I hope not. Certainly not like the widespread industry... Uh industry of crunch that you get at, at big AAA developers. That's where it's a much bigger problem, I think. Oh, right. B isn't opening the old pickaxe today. Hey, it's you. 
Yep, yep. For now, at least. You know, I never got your name. I'm the janitor. I clean up, do fix-its. Whatever needs done. Oh. Okay. So what's it been like being home again? Things like you remember? No. I don't know. I don't even remember today. Sounds like you've been through something. How did you know? Call it... experience. I swear, some mornings I feel every bit as old as these trees. You know, something big did happen. And I feel like I should have woken up today. And like, have learned something. But I don't know if I learned anything, really. Well... In my experience, the big things don't teach you anything. But they make you something. And sometimes you gotta wait a while and see what come of it. Hmm. Well, done an honest day's work. Quitting time. Smelter's game tonight. See you around. Not if I see you first, May. <laughs> Wait, how do you know my name? Yeah, they're a bit creepy, aren't they? Janitor, Mr. Janitor, Lord Janitor, Bob Janitor, thought. I could get a job as a janitor and really enjoy it. Yeah, what May was talking about, I woke up today and, like, I feel like I should have learned something. Something big happened. That's exactly how I feel too, right? I feel like this is, like, some big climax and I'm just trying to think, like, what now? It's a... it's a strange feeling. Anyway, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon to see Angie.